Hey guys, I'm Captain Duck and this is the Dia Vidits 2012 part 17. Um, in the previous episode I got attacked by the elves and uh, I tried to take care of some caged enemies. And uh, well, having uh, an elf attack like that happened, uh, having elves attack me from the start is a pretty rare thing. So I thought uh, we should take a look at the history of the world to find out what happened. And uh, I'm taking a look at the legend mode for that. And um, well, and that's what we're going to do this episode. Uh, so, yeah, if you don't like text, uh, this might not be the episode for you. This episode is going to be a talk video, basically. Going to go in on what happened to all the, um, the dwarves and the elves in the world. And uh, you might uh, want to skip this, but uh, if you don't, if you want to learn more about the world my dwarves are uh, inhabiting, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, then this is the video for you. And... Um, well, let's start doing that. Um, oh, first of all, I should show you I'm in Legends mode, and uh, well, that's something you get from from the main menu. Um, what? Oh yeah, and uh, don't be scared. I I abandoned my fortress, but this is in a copy of the um, folder I'm using. So don't worry. The the file and fence in my fortress is still up and running, but. Um, this is a copy of that uh, same directory and I embedded the fortress in the copy and now I can take a look at legends mode but uh, don't worry I'll, I don't need to reclaim finance fence or anything so um, legends mode legends mode is the history of the world go into it here from the main menu and uh, you see this and I already took a quick little look at it and uh, well that back then I had no idea who the persons in the world were who the important persons were and uh, well last night I've planned uh, today I've, I've read a whole lot of the legends mode and I got a general idea what ha what's going on in, in the dwarf world and um, well let's start off with something more visual than this is we're going to have a lot of text in this video um, so let's start off with a map and in the legends mode there are historical maps and, and this is a fun, fun thing to show um, so this is the world we have. It's a small world, a very small world, and there's a couple of civilizations. So, and this is also the year one, the year the world was generated, and all the elves and dwarves and kobolds were uh, plumped in, plumped in, sure, uh, put in, whatever. And uh, well, this is the world we have. And so far, there's only four civilizations. This is the year one, and uh, down here, these are the elves. This is uh, Ethimawada from the, the civilization the vege vegetation of flax that's the main elven civilization and um so we've seen we've seen that's dutch let's see uh that's uh elvish for saffron beans so saffron this is the capital of saffron beans and we'll probably see that more in the future and yeah you know, here's where the elves came from which attacked me uh there's other things on my map uh, here is the dwarven capital Zasitugosh or whatever uh, it's or uh, Knife Hollow in English Knife Hollow that's another name we'll see a lot and uh, there's some other things as well here's this little cobalt civilization the civil cobalt civilization of Sikili Bemis and there's a goblin civilization of the Prime Doom cool name um, oh yeah and our fortress is somewhere around the, here this sort of region um, anyway more impo uh, most important thing is the elven capital here uh, saffron beans and knife hollow the dwarven capital here um, so also this is year one we can now uh, take a look around some more and see how the civilizations had spread uh, I'm going to use the numpad for that um, yeah so with a plus and a numpad I, I switch forward ten years and see how the dwarves and how all the races have expanded and uh, I maybe should show this as well. <laughs> With enter, you can see the normal look of the world. This is what you see in game, and yeah, um, well, you get the same idea of the world, same thing. Let's go so back to the the civilization mode. And um, here for, was year one. Now we move on to year ten, and you see the the dwarven civilization here has spread a whole lot. It's uh, it's much bigger. All of these yellow gems are the dwarven civilization. This is the kobold. These are the goblins. Uh, the blue things are, I think the humans. I think the humans. Yeah. 
pretty sure blue is the Yumis. Uh, and the greens are the elves, the vegetation of flax. Um, so this is the year 10. And uh, let's move here three on some more. So year 1, nothing. Year 10, a little bit spread. Year 20, spreading some more. And looks like the kobolds and the goblins having a hard time here. And maybe the humans and the elves a little bit as well. But I don't think the, the humans and the elves were at the war. Uh, well, moving on, the dwarves spread over the most of the cobalt civilization and, yeah, probably killed most of them. Moving on some more, and, yeah, the well, cobalt got a little bit back, but the dwarves expanding, expanding out some more. Humans getting really, really big now on the right side of the map. Elves, well, here and there in the corners. Uh, year 60. Uh, not much change, and from here on now, there's probably not that much change. Uh, yeah. And here, <laughs> well, you can see the, the expanse of the humans. Yeah, the humans are blue, and by the year 110, they've taken over the entire world, probably. That's, that's humans for you. And yeah, 120 is this again, but and um, also now, yeah, the dwarves are pretty big, we're over the whole world. The elves are pretty smallish now, and well, there's not much left of the kobolds and the goblins. Um, so that's what basically happened, but it's much, much more complicated than that. Um, let's go into the more detailed views in the, the text listings. Um, where should we focus on first? Um, well, let's focus on the dwarves. And that's uh, our civilization is the merged arches. Uh, let me find that as well. It's here our civilizations, and here is our civilizations. Kirovot in dwarf uh, the merged arches, and um, yeah, the dwarf the <laughs> merged arches has quite a history. It's uh, tons of pages. Let, let me page down through it for if you, for those of you who actually want to read everything. Um, Let's see, I'm painting down through it now. Um, but yeah, so this is a dwarven civilization, and uh, a lot of things happened. And on well, the bottom here, violence fans happened, since we're also part of the dwarven civilization. Uh, and yeah, my fortress is named Violence Fenced. Um, okay, so what happened? Um, year one is a very, very important year in the dwarven history. The well, first of all, the dwarves came to be in the world. And uh, also what happened in year one, um, as you can see um, here, uh, yeah, the three-eyed crone, bride, bridegroom, golden glaze moments, the burial of bone became king of the merged arches. That happened in year one. Well, this is a little bit wrong and not completely correctly. The dwarves didn't start out with a bridegroom golden glass glaze moment. A bridegroom, a crone bridegroom, by the way, is a bad thing. Uh, a three-eyed crone is a well, a, a sort of witch harpy-like thing with three eyes and uh, wings of fleshy flesh, and they're bad things. So what really happened? You see this message here: the, the golden became the, the king. But that's weird. Actually, what happened? Golden was one of the first dwarves. Uh, let's take a look at Godin himself instead of this, because he was the first Dwarven King. And he had quite an interesting life. Uh, let's find him, and that's in his sort of fig figures, and I type Godin... Uh, yeah, here's at the top already. Uh, here is Godin Glaze Moments, the, the first Dwarven King, but <laughs> and uh, later on a crone bridegroom. Didn't start at that. Uh, Godin, well, he started as just a normal dwarf. He started actually as king of the world, king of the dwarves. And um, that was a fun time. <laughs> but um, yeah, until mid spring. So he. The world started in the year one, in I guess uh, the late winter of one. The early winter, whatever. Anyway, in one before spring. But in the spring of one, Godin. Godin was kidnapped by Omenbury Sable. And, uh, well, we'll see that name again, Omenbury Sable. That's a very important uh, crone. Yeah, uh, tree-eyed crone even. That's uh, the witch. Let's let's call Omen the witch. That's probably easier to do. And, yeah. So, uh, the witch captured Godin, the first dwarven king, well, in the first year of, of history. Um, she turned him into a bridegroom. 
So the dwarf started out with the king. The dwarf, the king got kidnapped and then got turned into bridegroom. It's not like we first had a bridegroom and made him king. Um, so after that, um, lots of things happened. He, w he was turned into the, the bridegroom. He also had a daughter. <laughs> daughter with Oma Burisable. You don't see it on this page, but uh, later in one he got Oma Burisable, the witch, pregnant. And uh, they got a daughter, and uh, she's named Xan Necro Tunnel, but more about Xan later. And uh, yeah, the later parts of his life after that, while Golden was a, a bridegroom, and uh, probably uh, uh, she was uh, the, the witch's bridegroom, and she defended the witch for years. And Golden attacked tons of goblins, and attacked dwarves, attacked uh, other peoples. Uh, and became wandering even uh, golden <laughs> yeah in his post life is as a bridegroom he did lots of things he lived from the year one till actually all the way till the year 92 and then he got killed by uh, a goblin <laughs> uh, a goblin shot him and killed him in year 92 so the first dwarven king yeah as you can see here he was king from one to one and uh, yeah, he had a long life after his death, sort of death, with his kidnapping, and um, well, he got shot by a goblin in, in 92, and uh, he also had some families and things like that, uh, more enemies, and 12 kills, most of them dwarves and a couple of goblins, so so that's the story of Godin, the, the first dwarven king. It's, uh, it's a very unlucky king, but... Uh, Oh well, <laughs> what you can you do? That's that's history for you. Um, so that was the first dwarven king. Now let's go to the first dwarven queen, or his follow-up here, his successor, and um, that's Monom Libertatix. Uh, let's find her again. Uh, she she's named Monom Libertatix, the female dwarf. She's a kick-ass queen of the dwarves uh, since the year two. She became the queen. She's also one of the first, um, the first dwarves of her kind. Um, actually, she also attacked, uh, was attacked by Oma Buri Sable, attacked by the same witch we, which kidnapped, kidnapped the first king. But she, yeah, escaped. Escaped. She survived. And uh, well, after that, in year two, she became queen. She settled in Nifolo, the capital, and. Um, then things happened <laughs> in year 17 uh, the daughter of the previous king the Xan Necro Tunnel the, king and, uh, the daughter of the king and the witch Xan um, attacked her and well she escaped luckily enough and then other things happened now this sentence <laughs> is very weird as well in the year 19 she married a vile horror room why the hell would she marry that but because it's not true in 19 she married a dwarf the dwarf all in severe castle, but yeah, a couple of months after that, he got kidnapped by a vile horror crone and turned into a vile horror crone. And uh, this is not the same thing as the tree eyed crones. The vile horror crone is another horrible witch sort of thing, which is different than the tree eyed crones. I don't know how but and why, but they are. But uh, not important. Anyway, so in year 19, she married. Uh, a guy, another dwarf, a couple of months later he was kidnapped by another groom. Okay, so next year she married Rigoth Inksmith. Rigoth is one of the most famous dwarves in dwarven history, which isn't the king. Um, and I really should show that. Rigoth Inksmith is a hero. Um, Rigoth, uh, let me find him as well. Uh, Rigoth Inksmith, the male swore. Dwarf, yeah, here he is. Um, so Regal's life, so he, the, the second queen's second husband, <laughs> that's Regal. He married the queen Monon in year twenty. In uh, year twenty-two, he attacked uh, the vile horror, uh, the vile horror which I think attacked the first, uh, the queen's first husband, um, but. Uh, yeah, he didn't kill, couldn't kill the vile horror, but he escaped. He confronted a troll in year 23, uh, killed the troll actually. Uh, in year 24, he confronted the Hydra, and the Hydra is one of the um, 
ah, yeah, one of the major historical creatures of the world. Um, I should show that as well. The, the uh, Dwarf Fortress is based on ages, and the ages are made mostly named after uh, important, powerful figures. And the Hydra, the Hydra Ego Belch Brew, was was one of those. And um, yeah, so Ego Belch Brew was uh, a Hydra living from the start of the world. And uh, the Queen's second husband, Rigold Inksmith, killed him. And that stopped the age of the, the age of the Hydra and the Hill Titan. And after that, uh, it just became the Hill Titan age. So, yes, the second Queen married a guy, and the guy killed the Hydra, one of the most strongest creatures in the world. So, that's, uh, that's an awesome husband, I, I guess. And it's awesome to see how the things are linked in the game. I had no idea that the Queen married the, the Hydra killer uh, until I read a lot and a lot of uh, in this language mode. Anyway, move on. Um, we're still at the second Dwarven Queen. <laughs> um, let's go back to her. So, um, let's see, Dwarven Queen as well. Uh, let's keep Modom. Uh, what? Modom. Modom. Luckily I made a list on the other screen which you can't see, but uh, I'm using this. Uh, Monom Leeward Addicts. Yeah, the Queen. So, um, yeah, she married the Hydra Killer. And, uh, well, then during the rest of her life she was attacked by way more monsters. Another tree-eyed monster, another vile horror, and um, she actually attacked a goblin. And uh, in the year 91 she became obsessed with her own mortality and sought to extend her life. That means she thinks, you know, maybe it might die, maybe I should become a necromancer so I could live forever. Apparently she didn't succeed and died of old age in 101. And, uh, oh, that was the life of the second Dwarf Queen, so... She, uh, also, let's check her family, she has a couple of uh, other families, there's some daughters as well, and a husband, and, well, an ex-husband. Um, so that's the life of the second queen. Um, and after that, there's the third dwarf queen of uh, the second dwarf queen and the third dwarf ruler even. Uh, Monom was the second one and the third one and the current ruler, which is still the ruler of my dwarves in my fortresses this time, is Metop. Uh, Metop. Metop curl gravel. Um, which should be here, Metop Curl Gravel. Yeah, there you are. Uh, and Metop has had an interesting life as well. Uh, Metop, yeah, was the blah 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 third daughter and third eldest daughter. Um, born in the year of 78. Um, let me see, checking some things. Yeah, uh, so Metop was born in the year 78. 78. 78, <laughs> 87, whatever. Um, born in this year. When she was three years old, in year 90, she was attacked by, um, let's see, um, the starved horror Sir Twilight Burry. One moment. Okay, yeah. Um, so in the year 90, the metal was attacked and her right ear was smashed by a, a starved horror, which is another sort of evil crone thing, I don't know. But uh, anyway, she was attacked in the year 90. Her ear was smashed. She was just three years old, but she managed to get away. She survived. And, uh, well, a couple of years later, in the year 99, she must have been about 12. Yeah. <laughs> when she was 12, I... She was, she was 12, she married Rimtar Mind Flashes and uh, another guy, and um, and became a siege operator in Cloister Joy, Cloister Joy, but um, that didn't last for long. Two years later, uh, uh, yeah, she yeah, was just a siege operator for two years, then in yeah, the year 101, uh, the pre previous queen died, pre queen um, Monom, and um, it's like Monom actually a family of her? No. No, she's not. Um, anyway, uh, Monom died in 101 and then Metop became the new queen. Um, just after two years of being a siege operator. Well, I don't know how she did that, but uh, she did. 
Um, then things went on, and uh, actually she's still alive. That's one of the fun things. She's still alive. She, she had made no kills, she, but she's still the current rule of my dwarves. And uh, apparently in the summer of 120, she became obsessed with her mortality. So she might be thinking about becoming a necromancer as well. And uh, well, that, that's our current queen. It's just a good queen. Um, what you don't see in this screen is uh, the war with the elves, which started in 104. But, uh, let's go. Uh, let's talk about more about it later. Um, well, anyway, this is basically the the dwarven civilization, the um, the merged archers. Um, let's take a look at it back. It's a, a, a look at the merged archers, the dwarven civilization by their leaders. Now, tons of things happened, and um, yeah, so until that, until 101, um, nothing was really a problem. Um, yeah, but uh, after that year um, 104, then it happened. <laughs> um, the merged archers attacked the vegetation of Flax, that's, that's the elf, so in the late spring of 104, the dwarves attacked the elves in some place uh, and the dwarf Fickled Tome Church, very important name again, led the attack and the defenders were led by elf someone. Um, so I don't know what happened here, uh, why the dwarves attacked the elves, but they did. The dwarf Fickled Tome Church, the, one of the best dwarven generals, uh, attacked the elves and uh, <laughs> well, that was the start of the war with the elves. And, um, yeah, the uh, later that same year they accepted an offer of peace by the elves, but the things were set. That that's really the start of the elf war. And um, to take a better look at the elf war, I should take a look at Fico Fico Tome Church because he led most of the attacks. Um, yeah, or yeah, let's let's take a look at Fico. Um, let's see. Uh, back to his store to figures again, and let's take a look at Fikult. Um Fikult, the Dome Church, yeah, that's here, that's her. Fikult is also a very, very important dwarf. Um, probably the most important dwarf after the Hydra Killer, probably even more important than the Hydra Killer. So Fikult was uh, another dwarf born in the year 31. Um, and, uh, oh, sorry, shouldn't touch the mic. Um, should take a look around here. Yeah, uh, Fikot was born, born in the year 31. Uh, when she was five years old, in the year 36, she attacked, was attacked by Oma Buri Sable. Uh, that's the witch which, which captained the first dwarven king. Uh, luckily, she escaped. But, uh, that, uh, if she didn't escape this, all, all of this wouldn't have happened. And um, let's see what has else happened. Oh yeah, when she was born, she was attacked by a minotaur. I, she, I think she was born during a minotaur attack, probably, since uh, dwarves happen to um, give birth to children when things are going down, when things are, uh, when they are being attacked or something. Then stress happens, and children ha happen to get born, even in dwarf fortress, or especially in dwarf fortress. Um, Okay, so what else happened to Fikot? Uh, Fikot the general, the yeah, um, Fikot she well she became a fishery worker in forty three. Um, a year after that, she was promoted to a general, and she moved to the capital of Knife Hollow. Um, and then more things happened. Um, let's see. But what is important in the year forty six? Uh, let's see about here. Yeah, she made a journey to the depths of the world, uh, captured or no tamed giant cave swallows. So Fikot is a fucking hero. Giant cave swallows are uh, one of the best tameable creatures in Dwarf Fortress, or not best tameable, or one of the best choices to tame since they can fly, and I think your dwarves can probably even ride on them. I I've been attacked one day by goblins on. Uh, cave swall giant cave swallows, and they went straight over the wall. <laughs> it was very, very bad. So, this guy, Fikot, or she, this girl, she, she's a general, and she came, went into the caves, tamed the cave swallows, got out, 
and then um, started war against goblins. That's uh, that's what started in 47. Um, let's see, yeah, that's the start of the war against the goblins of the Prime Doom, and. Um, well, after that, she did a lot, a lot of things. In year 50, she tamed Rudderers, which aren't that important as cave swallows. Uh, then there's lots of more goblins attacks. She yeah, attacked the goblins in 59, 73, 74, 75, and uh, won most of the times. <laughs> yeah. um, so she's always been an attacker. She she attacked the goblins like five, six times by now. And um, yeah, so the goblins, most of the goblins are gone and not really a problem. Uh, year 83, she went and again back into the underworld, tamed Jabberers, returned to the capital. Then, the year, the important year 104, when she led the attack against the elves uh, in the Dune Shrouding. Showering even. Uh, Fikot led the attack. The defenders were led by Nemo Noa, Nemo Nohwat, <laughs> Nemo Revert Play. And um, yeah, uh, she she was so successful against the goblins. She attacked tons of goblins and later on, well, she was a hero. She attacked the elves. I, I don't know why she attacked the elves. That's gen random generators, I think. And I can't really find a reason why the dwarves attacked the elves, but who cares? They attacked them. <laughs> now we're at war. And um, well, that was the first attack. And uh, well, that uh, she attacked, and later they made peace. The same year, uh, a couple of years later, Fikot went into the underworld again, but didn't tame anything. Uh, then the real wars against the elves started, and that's what you see here, this screen. Um, Fikot started leading all her fights against the elves. Um, she fought and won all her battles against the elves in 116, 17, 118, 119, 120, 121, 122, 23, and 124. <laughs> she fought from she fought the elves from 116 to 124 every year. And during that time, they actually raided the capital tons of times. Um, yeah, the first raid is in... Oh, sorry, I think I probably should show it better in another screen. Uh, show you in the Hill Titan Age, around the year 104. This should show you it as well. Um, yeah, here starts the war. Um, one year 104. Uh, the violent conflict is the first battle against the elves, and um, the savage battles is the first battle against Fikot, uh, from Fikot against uh, the elves. Um, yeah, Fikot uh, attacking the elves then. Um, so that war stopped in 1004, and uh, it was pretty quiet until uh, 116, I think. Yeah. In 116, uh, Fikot started attacking the elves again two years later, and actually she won. She uh, actually went on to the ca elf capital of Saffron Beans and pillaged it. She pillaged the capital of the elves. So that makes uh, <laughs> that makes uh, her a hero in my eyes. Fikot Tomchurch, you're a dwarven hero. She she, so she she pillaged the, the elven capital, but that's not the only time. She went on, in, uh, so the first time in 116. Um, in 118, she did it again, attacked <laughs> the elves, uh, pillaged their hometown, their capital again. Um, let's see, she went on to do that uh, even more times. Uh, let me see if I have the right list here on the side. Uh, yeah, 116 she needed to do it again. Uh, then in 121, the, the pillaging became an annual thing. So on 121, the third pillowing, pillaging, uh, 122, the fourth pillaging, 123, the fifth pillaging, 124, the second, the sixth pillaging, and uh, that's it. So, so Ficot, uh attacked the elves six times, 
got to their capital six times and pillaged the capital six fucking times. So, yeah. Uh, Fikot, Fikot, Dwarven hero should be remembered or for all time, <laughs> at least in my world. Um, anyway, also, uh, oh, with P you can see some other things in this screen as well, which are not as important. I didn't even know, I just noticed just now. <laughs> um, but okay, so so that's the, the history of the Dwarves against the Elves, uh, led by Fikot. And, um, well, it's still running the, the war. Um, uh, the last pillaging was in 124. Uh, oh, by the way, my fortress started in 125. Uh, do I say that correctly? No, 126. One uh, P. You can see this maybe. Um, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, in the early spring of 126, the Robots of Sockets so the merged archers found the violence fenced violence fenced and that's my fortress violence fenced so yeah um, that happened until now and then in the midsummer uh, late spring of 129 the elves actually attacked us but we captured most of them <laughs> and uh, well that's um, the dwarf elvish war basically um, and I'm 30 minutes in and 30 minutes of talking I probably should make an end of this video. Um, is there anything else you should really talk to you about? Um, well, maybe a little bit about the elves themselves, the vegetation of flax, they're a bunch of pussies. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, the elves, the elven history is pretty long as well. It's um, the gist of it. Um, they had a queen uh, the queen kind of twisted embraces. She was queen until like year 81. Then she died, and after that, it became well, kind of messy. Uh, like after that, every couple of years, the dwar the elves got a new queen, and or the queen died again, and got another queen. Before that, they had one queen who ruled, but after that, it was a mess, and there was succession for wars or something. Then in 104 the dwarves attacked, and well, you know that part of the story by now. Um, let's see, the things I should show you, um, some of the interesting people, oh yeah, Vampire 1. Vampire 1 has a big history as well, and uh, he's still in my fortress, uh, he's still chained. Um, let's find him, since he, I named him, he's actually very easy to find. Uh, actually all the vampires are, here's Vampire 1. Um, so here is his history. Um, the interesting thing about them. Um, one second. Ah, oh, yeah. Um, so Vampire One was one of the first dwarves in the world. Uh, wasn't always a vampire. Started out as a, a normal dwarf uh, until yeah the late autumn of two. He became a vampire. He. Um, uh, wait a minute. Um, one second, was reading wrong, okay. So what happened, uh, in year 2 she became a general, 10 years later, year 12, she became a vampire. Um, she was turned into a vampire in year 12 and started, uh, um, well, wandering basically, moving from fort uh, fortress to fortress, going to a place, um, until there was too much suspicion and then she fled again and again and this happens on for a whole lot of years although what happened here between 26 and 71 is pretty long um, I guess that she was traveling during that time I don't know um, anyway in 124 a human up confronted her in 124 she actually killed that human that's probably the kill of the human kill we saw on that list um, and let's see violence uh, then in the early autumn of 128 vampire one settled in violence fenced and became a member of us the merged archers again um, and yeah she did it by uh, she fooled the merged archers into believing she was a vampire one a sticked stuck at 100. Another dwarf. <laughs> Shouldn't have named Vampire 1. It's a terrible name. But um, anyway, um, yeah, she went into our fortress and uh, until we found her. <laughs> until she started 
leaving, uh, she drained the dust fangbridge of blood. And then I knew there was a vampire, and then I, uh, I sentenced her to jail. <laughs> but yeah, uh, this is also very interesting. So this is a pretty strong vampire. 1,259 other kills. That's more than a thousand kills, and uh, two notable kills. A, a human, the breach bird, the human, and a ghostly dwarf. I don't know how do you kill a ghostly dwarf, but she did. <laughs> I don't know. In here, 128 as well. Oh, she didn't kill the ghostly dwarf. Litast is the, uh, the dwarf she killed, and now is a ghostly dwarf. That's that's weird. It's, yeah, she killed the dwarf, then it became a ghost. Not for, not the other way around. Not killing a ghost. Uh, and other things, yeah, the, the one thousand kills, uh, a couple of dwarves in lots of different places. Uh, Two hundred eighty elves in whole touch. <laughs> Three hundred nine elves in whole touch. Three hundred twenty six humans in whole touch, and three hundred twenty eight humans in whole touch. That's uh, yeah, in whole touch. She killed a lot of people. No idea where Hall Touch is, but uh, that's probably where she stayed so long, I guess. Uh, but, 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 yeah, here, Hall Touch. But the Harmonia Spike, so I guess she was around there for all those years. Um, so that's the story of Vampire 1, and so she's in our jail, and that's fine. And, well, well, one day she'll get out of jail, but we'll start, hearing, start using her as a defense mechanism. She killed <laughs> over a thousand dwarves, and... Uh, and uh, over a thousand people, and uh, so she'll be pretty strong. If I just equip her, uh, throw her in that little cage I put in front of my fortress, I have a very, very strong dwarf to the dwarf vampire to defend my fortress, and that'll be a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, that's uh, the dwarf vampire, vampire one, and well, that's all. I th yeah, I about basically learned from this world. Um, thing else. Um, oh yeah, what I should show is the other hill titan. Uh, so there were two uh, mythical creatures. There was the Hydra and the hill titan. Uh, the Hydra is dead, but the hill titan is still alive. And that means he might even attack my fortress one day, so let's take a look at him now before uh, I go back to that. And, um, what was his name again? The Hill Titan. Um, the king towards my other list over here. Stror Nutsgulis. Okay. Stror. Uh, this one probably. Yeah, Stror Nutsgulis, the tree of clams. So, this is the the main um, main mythical creature in the world, the, the power in the world, the, the age is named after him. The It's the age of the hill titan, the age of this guy, and uh, apparently he is a huge one-eyed mite. So I thought titan implied humanoid, like giants and stuff like that, but I guess it doesn't, since this is a giant mite instead of a giant humanoid. I guess Titan just means really big. <laughs> um, it, so this is the the major power in the world at the moment. It's a gigantic, huge, one-eyed mite with a spiral shell, and it uh, moves around. It has a fern green exoskeleton. It shoots webs. It's a she's associated with rivers, plants, nature, and animals. So, okay, and. Um, Stror here has quite a life as well. It's uh, being hill titan. It's a life of attacking people and being attacked and being um, being um, asked to a duel or something. To being uh, yeah, asked to a duel. Really shifted, being asked to a duel by someone or something and uh, attacking them or killing them usually. And apparently, there's also worship. <laughs> that's that's weird. In the midsummer of sixties, he received worship from the human Perum Splat Rift. So, yeah, they even get worship these these guys, the, the Titan. Um, and uh, yeah, she did lots of other things. Um, and well, let's go a little bit faster, mid page down. 
so much things in this list. Uh, someone's going to read all this, but I don't know. Um, let's see what else happens in the end. Nothing. She's still alive. Um, the lots of enemies. <laughs> whole page of enemies here. Uh, living in the lobster of skins, apparently. And have made 90 kills. Lots of humans and dwarves and... Mostly humans and dwarves by the looks of things. Anyway, still alive and... Uh, still attacking humans. Okay, so that's the Hill Titan. Uh, Strohr, uh, maybe he'll show up one day, maybe he won't. At least I have an idea now. Um, and 40 minutes in, 40 minutes of talkie. Well, yeah, this is uh, this has been enough. You you now have an idea of the the history of the world, uh, the history of the dwarves and the elves and the war and why the elves are attacking us be well, because we attacked them first. But that doesn't matter. <laughs> We're going to slaughter them all anyway. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's end the video. I I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I hope there's actually people who watch this video. Tell me if you actually watched the whole video, 40 minutes minutes of talkie. But uh, yeah. I hope you did. And um, anyway, next episode we're going to be going back to normal, normal town. And um, next episode we'll probably be making a nice shooting gallery of all the, the naked elves we captured, we captured, or the, the elves we captured and then made naked. So uh, that's next episode. For now, this has been uh, been more than enough, and uh, I'll see you guys later.